I'm sitting in one of my favourite spots at Raynham. It's the southwest corner. I've got rifle butts behind me, some of the extensive reed beds in front, and a pair of nesting swans over there. And on a pleasant spring morning like this, it's a very pleasant place to have a rest and just enjoy the atmosphere. But if you want to see a lot, then you have to get moving. Leaving the visitor's centre, the whole vista of the marshes greets us and we're led down to the first orientation map and perhaps a notice board inviting the explorer to join in whatever might be the activity of the day. Today we're going in an anti-clockwise circuit of the reserve and heading north, the first landmark we encounter is the appropriately named bus stop. It's a shelter where it's possible to look out over the Purfleet scrape and see what species are showing nearby. As we continue northwards along the path, a fine display of blackthorn blossom is in abundance at this time of the year and attracts many different species of insects enticed out by the warming sunshine. Not to be outdone, the hawthorn too adds its contribution to the white blanket of shimmering flowers. Just before we reach the woodland area, an access ramp for wheelchair users looks westward over the reserve. Gradually we are led on to a point where we have a choice of detours. Either to the right on a raised boardwalk through marshy woodland, or left through the old, long-abandoned cordite store. It's this way we'll go today. This sheltered haven is dominated by brambles that provide both food and shelter for birds and insects alike. The green veined white and the brimstone display in the sunshine. The Chetty's warbler and the black cat try to mark their territory with singing competitions. Many of the birds that frequent this area are by nature secretive you may hear their song much more frequently than you actually see them. But patience is often rewarded. The orange tip rarely seems to settle, but you may be fortunate to find one feeding. Likewise, this nervous hedge sparrow or dunnock is easily spooked. Don't forget to look down as well as up there's much to be seen in the undergrowth. We can leave the wildlife in peace by exiting through the tunnel of ivy at the end of our detour and return to the main path. Turning left, we eventually come upon the Woodland Discovery Zone Educational activity is a major feature of the work of RSPB at Raynham, especially with visiting school parties that frequently use these areas. The detour we might have taken to the right eventually rejoins the circuit as we did. It's here that the woodland feeders attract both birds and humans.
The woodland eventually gives way once more to the marsh and we hit open country again. You don't go very far anywhere in the reserve without coming upon water. It's the lifeblood of rain and marshes and its aquatic residents. The marsh frog. The grass snake. And several species of fish. It's at this time of the year that the cattle make their return to the marsh to help maintain its sustaining quality by grazing and ploughing the ground with their feet. After an area of open grassland where you might see some not so wild wildlife, we come to the Ken Barrett Hide and Scrape and another information board. From the map we can see that we are coming to the northern boardwalk which will take us through extensive reed beds where we might see reed buntings that seem to enjoy posing for the cameras or bearded reedlings that nest deep in the reeds. These are shy birds and also dislike strong winds so you may only see them rarely but occasionally hear their characteristic pinging call. Reed warblers can be found here too. As our path turns south, we reach the Mantlet, a remnant of the occupation by the MOD. It's a protective barrier for soldiers holding targets for the rifle range and is several hundred feet long. It points us to the substantial shooting butts hide which has raised viewing towards both east and west. A more recent addition to the reserve is this toilet block with disabled facilities, situated next to the Purfleet Rifle Range Halt. The halt features a large mural, and opposite, under the mantlet, a series of paintings about the lot of the First World War soldier. A chicane in the path takes us past the dragonfly pools with their associated metal sculptures and, via the rifle butts, onto the marshland discovery zone. The sandbank outside the Hyde's viewing window is a success story indeed, as it's home to a pair of nesting kingfishers. This iconic, colourful bird is often only seen as a blue flash in the sunlight but here they can be seen in spring, coming and going in the constant quest to feed themselves and their brood. Spring is a time of growth and renewal, but the benefit of one individual often requires the demise of another. The grey heron is frequently seen at Raynham, and this is one factor which controls the numbers of resident marsh frogs. But even among the more omnivorous species, bringing up a family is a full-time and demanding task. Also demanding for human parents is keeping children happy, so the addition of the giant play anthill provides an opportunity for a few moments respite during a family visit. Another success story at Raynham is the water vole, a rare species in some parts of Britain. They've become well established in the several channels of the marsh, especially on the south side. So keep an eye open for them as you return to the visitor centre by the Southern Trail. We've completed our whistle stop circuit of the perimeter path and we're almost back at the visitor centre. I hope you've seen something which has inspired you to come and make a personal visit to Rain and Marshes. And even if you've been before, 
something that might have given you renewed enthusiasm to make another visit. In the meantime, I can hear the faint but compelling call of the almond slice and the latte. So I'll see you soon.